why don't Canon and 4K and mirrorless get along very well? In this video, we'll explore why. In a recent interview that DP Review did with some executives from Canon, they were talking about 4K and mirrorless in particular. And with the 4K, when asked, you know, is Canon gonna be adopting more 4K? What are, what are y'all focusing on going forward? The answer was, well, we haven't seen 4K hit the TV market. The TV market for 4K isn't really there. And that's a little bit foolish, in my opinion. 4K is not just useful to use at 4K. 4K is also useful to down-res, to down-sample to 1080 so that your 1080 image is better. You do that, Canon, in several of your cinema cameras. So when DP Review asked a couple of Canon executives recently here at CP Plus what were the two kind of focus areas for Canon in the next product cycle, their answer was twofold and it was video and connectivity. Now what they're saying with the connectivity is that we get a lot of users saying that this isn't a very easy connection process. One of the other things that really got under my skin was when DP Review was asking these Canon executives about mirrorless and stabilization. What the executives were saying was that we're not going to change anything because we want to make... The mirrorless thing is all about small and light. And while I get that, the weight of adding IBIS is not substantial, first off. Second off, by having dual IS, you're going to be so much better off. Like, the Camera Store TV recently put out a new uh, Wooden Nichols episode, their second, I believe shot almost entirely on the GH5. And there's a handheld shot right at the beginning where they're walking into the space that they're gonna be filming in. The guy doesn't have a rig. It's entirely handheld, and it looks like he has a rig because there are both of those IS systems, both in body and in the lens, working together and creating a very smooth picture. One of the smoothest pictures that I've seen, especially handheld. And from what I understand, Olympus makes fantastic in-body image stabilization. I, I think by, by being concerned with weight, Canon's just killing themselves again. I mean, it's they need to adapt to what their competitors are doing, not what entry-level shooters are doing. Because those entry-level shooters aren't going to be the ones spending the money inside the system. They're probably not going to upgrade their cameras like you and I, who are more serious about this as a hobby or as a profession. You and I are going to spend more money and we're being ignored by Canon again, I feel like. That's the way I feel about it. And make it real. Make it physical stabilization, please, Canon. Thank you. Canon needs to, like, stop doing... Stop listening to the leaders that they have because Canon has the ability to do so well in the markets that they want to. And, and they, they definitely have the ability, but they don't seem to care. They seem to be riding their coattails until necessity impels them to do something. They're not innovating. They're not saying, can we make the best whatever, camera body. Lens. One of the other questions I was asked of these Canon executives by DP Review was, where do you see the mirrorless market going? You know, what what is happening in that right now? And what they're saying is the biggest adoption is in Southeast Asia, which is not exactly surprising. But one of the other things that they said is that it's kind of, the growth of mirrorless has kind of stopped. And I feel like there are a couple of causal factors for that. I think, first off, there aren't enough really good mirrorless cameras. I think, second off, if there were more affordable quality mirrorless cameras, more people might buy them. And I think that there aren't enough really good lenses for the mirrorless systems that are out there. I know the Panasonic Lumix system, they have a lot of great lenses, but I mean like Sony and Canon. There are almost no EFM lenses. Sony has really been busting their butt to get more and better lenses out, but I feel like there should be more budget-conscious lenses in that lineup. And that's something they've just completely avoided doing, 
except for the 50 and the 85, which are admittedly great to have in terms of focal length, but sounds like that 50 already needs an update. And most of the rest of the lenses are not exactly approachable in terms of their price point, especially with a G, G Master or a Zeiss badge. And the only way to get people in is to make it easy to invest into that system, like a lot of the EFS lenses do. I feel like what Sony needs is more cheap lenses, and I feel like what Canon needs is to just screw the M mount and put EFS on their mirrorless system cameras, because then they would have that entire lineup without a bullshit $250 adapter. So thank you very much for your time and for your attention in watching this video. I really appreciate that you uh, have come along with me in, in this conversation about Canon, something I'm, for better or for worse, rather passionate about. So if you agree with me or disagree with me, I'd love to learn the nuance of your position. So please leave a comment below and let's start a conversation. Um, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.